Welcome to Syntax. Today we have three ways stumped. We've all brought three weird and obscure HTML, CSS, JavaScript questions, and we're going to try and stump each other and see who has the best knowledge for this. You guys ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. Hand on the buzzer. All right. Available under a Dash WebKit prefix since Chrome version one, this CSS property allows us to define multi-column layouts. Um. Okay, Wes has buzzed in. What's your answer, Wes? WebKit columns? Yeah, I'll, I'll accept it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> and oh. actually, I didn't realize that that was only a WebKit prefixed one. I've just been writing that raw. No, you can write it raw as well. Well, yeah, yeah you can now, but it wasn't, what I was saying is like, you can do it with a WebKit prefix since Chrome version one. Oh, they've since, yeah. Yeah, they've since stabilized it. But yeah, so columns, uh, it's under this group, but you typically can break it down into like column count or column width. Yep. And usually it was used for text, right? If you want to break text down into two or three columns on your page, we don't need yep. CS. I mean, this was before CSS grid, before Flexbox. Uh, so literally all you need is column count and it'll break those elements up into multiple columns. Yeah. In practice, I found this API to be only useful when you're trying to do like a newspaper style columns. Because anytime yeah. you try to use it for actually laying things out, it's a giant pain in the ass. Yeah, because the flow is different than CSS grid. It goes down then back up and yeah. then down. It's it's a different flow than CSS grid, yeah. The way that you can use this is if you want to get Pinterest um, yeah. working. So if you want things to stack perfectly inside of each other, now that CSS masonry grid is dead, you it's have to set an explicit height on your container and then it will go It'll, it'll go down, so like one, two, three, and then it'll wrap up to the second one, three, four, five, six, which is almost never what you actually want. You usually want it to go like one, two, three, and then right. go back to the first column for four, five, six. So yeah, it's not a great API. There's very <laughs> little control. Nice. All right, great job, Wes. All right, y'all ready? Y'all yeah, ready for ready. this? Yes. Okay, the question is, what is the select? <laughs> Wes. Uh, this uses CSS donut scoping, um, where it defines a scope starting at the article body and then stops the scope at the figure so that scope inside of anything inside of that figure does not continue to cascade. Yes. And uh, what about Whoa. just what about the figure itself, though? When there is a direct descendant of the scope. Perfect. When there's a direct figure descendant of the scope this will donut scope to that yes perfect. fascinating I've, I've never used this what's the support like is this is this out there it is out it is available in every browser and is in safari or is in firefox nightly currently so it okay. is it is dropping there. yeah it's On dropping its way. nice for the two percent of firefox users still out there all right uh i i can't win my own so i'll have to take this one off are you guys ready ready let's do it According to the CSS color four specification, how many named no. CSS colors are there? <laughs> what? Uh, can oh, we like have a blue, a range? green, yeah. golden rod? Uh, if both of you get it wrong, we'll do closest without going over. If both of us get it wrong, we're both going to get it wrong. <laughs> right. Well, then guess close. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm guessing. Uh, my guess is 124. Okay, that is incorrect. But my guess close, though. Is oh, don't, don't say that. You, you gave Scott oh, a shoot. hint. <laughs> 200. <laughs> oh, wrong. There's 148. Uh, uh, no, there was what? 147 okay. in, but yep. they in added, uh, CSS Rebecca Colors Purple. 4, we added Rebecca Purple. So it's 148. I figured they would have added some more by now. Yeah, they should add some like fun ones. You know, like, like I guess we have Papaya Whip already. Like if we you were to papaya. add a color to CSS, what would you, what would you add? Syntax mm. yellow. Yeah, syntax yellow. Syntax yellow. I would do something <laughs> funny, like, uh, okay. or like, what if we could have like named gradients, you know, like like bovine cow or something bovine like that. Cow. That would be really nice. You know, just yes. some, some nice built in oh. ones. Man, we got a petition to get syntax yellow on there. That has yeah, to that'd be great. CJ gets the point on that one. Sweet. Oh. I was closer without going over. All right. In the year 2005, the following code was valid JavaScript in what web browser? In 2005. 2005. Oh. All right, West West uh, in. What do you got? Yeah, I don't have an answer, but. I'm going to say say IE7. No. I'm going to say IE5. 
No. no. I oh, God. It wasn't <laughs> around then. That was I, way I guess, older. We'll bounce yeah, back and forth. Yeah, but still, it would have existed in 2005. Okay, back yes, and forth. Uh, um, yeah, so Wes, what do you got? What's the name of the other browser that was around? Not I... Ne it starts with an N. Why am I blanking on the name of that browser? Can I Google? No. No. Oh, my, my Google Home just went off. <laughs> <laughs> um, Firefox? Yes. Oh, yes, that is correct. This looks like JSX, right? It looks like like oh, why yeah. is there some why is there some HTML in my JavaScript? So this is known as ECMAScript for XML or E4X, um, and there was a full E4X. on specification. Like it came out in 2004. So since the year 2000, over 20 years ago, they were trying to put uh, XML into our JavaScript. And the initial idea was you could actually create uh, XML objects because you know like there's a there's an API for like this, creating an, a new XML element and passing a string into mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. This is the current API that we have, but this was a proposal to be able to write code that looks like this. Oh, and, man. Yeah, and so even in, like, I there's the, that. yeah, the Yahoo Developer Network talked about how to do this. There was also, like, a query language for it. So if you have actual, like, XML data, you could, there was syntax, almost like JSON-like syntax for getting into this XML. So, like, you could filter where data.item.source is Amazon. Oh, this man. line of code would filter this list down. Uh, oh, to that's just, cool. That's what yeah. they took from us. Yeah. It, yeah. That <laughs> seems like not that long ago, but also so long ago. Yeah, yes. an infinite amount of time ago. Yeah. So yeah, Wes gets this one. He's he's uh, in the lead it. right now. I'm very smart. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> well, and because I don't want to win this, I have uh, two questions for you all both, giving you an opportunity to score even more points than all me. All right. So the first JavaScript question I have for you here is which of the following are globals in JavaScript? It's multiple choice. Which of the following? Okay. <laughs> CJ um, has I, no, I buzzed. I buzzed in first, and I'm going to oh, say, did? yeah, uh, data view. Data view is a global, but it is not the only one. Wes. Oh. Uh, reflect data view in a sync function. You're both wrong. What? I think reflect and data view are JS globals. You're wrong, Wes. Okay. Uh, I think they're all globals. Yes, Wes. They are all globals. And with that, what does Atomics do? That's your bonus question. You get bonus question time. Is this um, an open, bo open book quiz? Atomics no. is a Atomics is a library for dealing a library? with. Um, not a library, sorry. It's an API for working. I want to say it has something to do with time, but now I'm trying to think it's maybe something to do with data. Um, All right, you can both uh, buzz in. CJ, if you if you can figure out what Atomics is before Wes can, you can answer it. Yeah, well. um, it's for working with uh, arrays, like typed arrays. So it's atomic operations on typed arrays. Yeah, it, it, what is an atomic operation? Like mutating it, like add or remove. I don't know if it's for arrays specifically, but when okay. memory is shared, multiple threads can read and write the same data in memory. Atomic operations make sure that predictable values are written and read, that operations are finished before the next operation starts. And there's a whole host of atomics, atomic pause, atomic store, sub, wait. Um, so I don't think it is limited to just arrays, but CJ, you were way closer because it has nothing to do with dates. Are right, you guys ready? Three, two. One, is this valid JavaScript? Oh, oh. um, buzzed in. Oh, CJ buzzed in. I should just CJ buzz buzzed in. in. You got to make a buzzing sound with your your, your mouth. Beep. All right, CJ. Uh, as long as you don't have any zero width characters in there, yes, it is. It is just spaces, just white spaces. That yeah, is so correct. Cool. Because I should have just JavaScript buzzed in. ignores white space. You can technically put as many white spaces in there as as you want. Um, and I find that sometimes helpful if you don't want to put brackets around something like this. You can simply just put a space. I, I don't what? use that help at all. <laughs> <laughs> I put that in when I'm in the dev tools and I don't feel like wrapping it in a in like going back to the start That's and so wrapping funny. it. You just put yeah. a couple you put a space in there and it will work. You can just do something like this. Where that's also useful is um, when you chain. If you have like an array. Mm. Like and you want to chain them, yeah. Right? That's okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah, because that makes those a lot are, more sense. Our spaces. Yeah. 
Okay. So weird, eh? All right. To the HTML questions, Scott, go back in time to when you were first making websites. This is no, <laughs> this don't is you... don't help him. He, he has can't. zero points. Is, he is not no. All right. Only available in Internet Explorer. This HTML element set up a sound to be played in oh, the background. Bzz. Oh, come on. BG sound. <laughs> you got it, Wes. Oh. Did you ever use gosh. this? Gosh. No. Oh, yeah. I used it on MySpace. I've never yeah. used BG sound. Yeah, so oh. this, is, this is obsolete. And so this was before HTML5. Um, and basically, you could pass in like a MIDI file or an AU file, and it would play sound in the background. And this was Gosh. the era when you when you, uh, sites didn't have to ask you this either. So you would just go to a site and all of a sudden it would start playing music. Auto play. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that how they yeah. did the hamster dance? I bet it is. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Scott, shambles. I <laughs> Listen, if anybody has ever seen me in a high pressure uh, quiz situation, you know that I crumble immediately. Wes, we all saw this at the uh, Family Feud. My brain just goes blank. It just blanks. <laughs> Uh, my question is, what are command and command for attributes in HTML? Hey, man. Wow, that was fast. Um, this, this has to be is... exactly right or you don't get the points. <laughs> uh, this is the a new API in HTML and JavaScript that allow you to declaratively like do things. Um, so like like opening and closing of modals or mm -hmm. or one example we gave on the podcast was being able to uh, declaratively make pause and play buttons. Um, mm -hmm. So you would register them with JavaScript and then you'd be able to just say command and command four where command four is for the element and then the, the command itself would be like pause or play. Um, so there are a number of built in ones as well as you can register custom ones. Wes with a very thorough and very correct answer. Nice. You got you nailed that answer. <laughs> That's a cool API. I'm excited for this. Is it related to the HTML invoker API? It is like, the Invoker they, API. That, it is that's the, the name. Sorry, okay. I didn't even say that. Invoker's it's API. All right. I, I don't even know if they really refer to them that much as Invokers anymore, other okay. than just command. It is a Invoker Commands API is, is what it is called, technically, yes. I think the um, Invoker's API is the way to create custom ones, and then mm -hmm. just the command and command four are the like properties like and what are the what are the ones that are built in the ones that are built in are for popover and modal right now okay. so basically being able to trigger a popover or a modal and then there is a nice api for custom ones um as is right now and guys it's available in every browser except for well it's in uh, safari technology preview so <sighs> if you're There's on so um, mac os betas it's available on everything right now so shout out it's, it's in Firefox proper, so yeah. All right, you ready? This is valid yes. JavaScript, yes, bing. Explain what and why an HTML page might be emoji baked. Emoji baked. Uh, I, I pinged in Buzz. Um, Z, yes. I don't even know what emoji baked is. I'm gonna guess, folks, I gotta get a point. Emoji baked is when an emoji has been <laughs> manipulated incorrectly. No. I'll take a guess. I've never actually heard the term. Maybe this has something to do with just like ASCII encodings. So if a page has like the encodings oh. are actually sent over in the source of the HTML um, instead of the emojis themselves. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Am I close? I'm on the right track. No, you're right. You're right. You're on the right okay, track. Okay. Is, is, it, is it when it's not UTF-8? Yes. Okay. Give it to Scott. Kind of. <laughs> And then emojis so, show up as text character, or they shows up as the yeah the wrong. They don't show up mm. as emojis. So we had this happen on the syntax Slack channel the other day, where oh. our RSS feeds were being piped in, and we were getting random Chinese characters show up, um, and we're like, "What the heck is going on?" And we couldn't find these characters anywhere in it. So I finally just copy pasted the Chinese characters, which translated to nothing. And I copy pasted it into ChatGPT. I was like, what's going on? And they said, this is Moji baked, meaning that the encoding of our feed was UTF-8, but it was being ingested as a some mm -hmm. sort of other encoding. So essentially, when you ingest text that's been encoded as something other than UTF-8 and you, you parse it separately, 
then all of the code points of UTF-8 are off and, and you end up getting like other random characters. In this case, they were offset by a certain amount and they were just showing us random Chinese characters. I don't know if I deserve points for that answer, I'm but I'll take it. I'm going to give CJ a half a point for that one. I, I was just, you know, this this is like the classic uh, testing interview strategy of just like start talking and maybe you'll get it right. Yeah. I had no, I had, I had no idea. <laughs> All right, hold on. We feel bad for Scott for doing so poorly. So we're going to give him a chance to bring it home. My question is a CSS question. The font property in CSS is a shorthand for all of the or many of the font properties. I will give you one point for every shorthand property that is able to be settable in the font property. So, you know, when you set a font, you can use a shorthand to set a number of font properties. I'll give you one point for every single one that is available in there. Okay, mm. I love the pity question. Um, font, size, <laughs> font, weight, font, yep, style. Two. Yep, three. Font variation settings. Yes, that's four. I, font, I, 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 font family. Did we say that one? No. Mm -mm. Five. You only need one more to win the game, Scott. Oh, I remember even like what they are, but I don't know what the proper, like, I don't know what the property tell you, names are. I'll tell you, there's eight. Mm. So there's three more and yeah. I don't know that you would ever get it. Well, I know. there's one more I think you could get. One of them is for limiting, like if it can do the uh, browser based with for bolding. I don't know, font ligature settings. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, all right. So we're going to give you five points. Does that, that doesn't, that's not enough to win it. The other three were, you're going to kick yourself for this one line yeah. height. Mm. Oh, because that can be defined. Okay. I yeah. was just thinking about font hyphen properties. And yeah. then the other two were font width with and yeah. system family name which i don't even know the system family <laughs> name is an option of caption icon menu message box small caption or status bar that would be crazy if i would have gotten that one yeah so, you would have known i was cheating you would have known that was <laughs> <laughs> oh well good job scott I, those ones where you have to list them all off you're actually very good at so good job and I don't have to buzz. If I don't have to buzz, I You're can do You're not stressed okay. out, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know how you did down in the comments. Did you get all of these right? Did you get any wrong? Um, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.